we're talking about avoiding empty rituals such as boastful or show-off praying and embracing genuine spiritual practices. You see, it's easy to get caught up in routines and rituals without really considering their deeper meaning. Today, we're going to explore what the Bible has to say about this, particularly focusing on Jesus' teachings on prayer. So let's start by taking a look at a key passage in Matthew 6, verses 5 and 6, where Jesus talks about prayer. This verse says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So imagine this scenario. You're in a group setting, perhaps at church or a gathering at a social event, and it's time for you to lead in prayer. As everyone bows their heads and closes their eyes, you find yourself more concerned about how you come across to those around you than genuinely connecting with God. You start crafting your prayer in your mind, not based on what's in your heart, but what you think will impress or resonate with the others. Maybe you use big words or try to sound more spiritual than you actually feel. Your main focus becomes making sure others perceive you as a devout or pious Christian rather than sincerely seeking God's presence and guidance. This is similar to the person in church that prays aloud for everyone to hear. This is now not a private moment between you and God. It's turned into a look at me moment for everyone to hear you thanking Jesus over and over. In these moments, prayer becomes less about communing with God and more about seeking the approval or admiration of our peers. It's like we're putting on a performance, playing a role that we think will earn us praise or respect. But the problem is God sees right through our facade. He knows the intentions behind our words and he desires authenticity above all else. So now let's zoom in on Jesus's words about prayer in Matthew 6, 5 and 6. Picture this. Jesus is addressing a crowd, and he's warning them about the dangers of praying for show. He points out how some religious leaders would pray in public places, not out of genuine connection with God, but to gain admiration of others. Can you imagine? They were missing the whole point of prayer. Instead, Jesus encourages us to pray in private where our focus can solely be on God away from the distractions of uh, public performance. So what can we learn from Jesus's teachings here? Well, it is all about authenticity. Jesus emphasizes sincerity, humility, and genuine communion with God in all of our spiritual practices. It's not about putting on a show or seeking approval from others. Rather, it's about cultivating a deep, personal relationship with God. And this principle extends beyond prayer to all aspects of worship and spiritual life. We're called to be real with God, to come as we are, with all of our doubts, struggles, and joys. Now, here's where it gets personal. I want to encourage each of us to take a moment to reflect on our spiritual practices. Are there areas where we might be slipping into empty routines? Maybe it's in our prayer life, our worship, or even our service to others. Let's be honest with ourselves and identify those areas where we need to refocus our hearts on God. And don't worry, we're all in this together. None of us are perfect but we can support and encourage each other along the way. Being human, we have a hard time contemplating the fact that God not only hears our outer voice, but he hears our inner voice just as clearly. So when you feel the need to thank Jesus in the middle of worship, remember 
that he hears your inner voice, there is no need to speak loudly for others to hear. Let's remember the importance of genuine spiritual engagement. Jesus didn't just want us to go through the motions. He desires a deep, intimate relationship with each of us. So let's strive to avoid empty rituals and instead embrace authentic worship and spiritual practices. Let us pray with sincerity, worship with reverence, and serve with love. And as we do, may we experience a deeper connection with God and a renewed sense of purpose in our faith journey. Remember, there are so many things in our daily lives, including when we go to church, that have strayed away from what the Bible teaches. Now, you will probably never find a perfect church. You can find something wrong everywhere you go, but just remember to know your Bible and to know what is expected of you and to do your best to serve Christ as he has asked us to. Always remember, just as we sin and fail every single day, our churches cannot be perfect either. The goal is to find yourself a place of worship where you are comfortable, where the people are genuinely good Christians, and you actually feel a connection with God. If you're still with me today, uh, I would like to conclude this video with a prayer and I would love it if you joined us. Father, thank you for blessing us daily with everything we need to live our lives. Thank you for surrounding us with like-minded people that help keep us focused on you. Father, in these trying times, be with our brothers and sisters in Israel and the Jewish community around the world as the world seems to gradually start to turn against them. We know that these things are all foretold in the Bible, Father, so help us to stay alert, to stay ready, and to constantly spread your word. Help us to not be afraid or ashamed to spread your word. And help us as Christians to all bind tightly together while we await the glorious return of Jesus. Father, as usual, protect us from the evil one as his power and his temptations grow daily. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.